We're now looking at a teaching video on polynomials. The subtopic is Remainder's Theorem. So point one there, the Remainder Theorem states that where a polynomial f of x is divided by the factor, a linear factor ax plus b, the remainder is, well, first of all, if that is equated to a zero, then I will have ax equals to negative b and x is equals to negative b on a. So that is the expression of x that I'll put into the fx. So the remainder is f of negative b on a. That will give me the remainder. For point two, if a polynomial f of x is divided by a divisor of a linear expression, that is a linear expression, x is to the power of 1 or degree 1. So the remainder is a constant. So I can put a c or just constant. If a polynomial f of x is divided by a divisor of a quadratic expression, you can see the highest order of uh, the x degrees is 2. The remainder is a linear expression. So that it can be, if I put it in another way, dx plus e. So that is a linear form. So you would realize that the degree of the remainder is one fewer than the degree of the divisor. I repeat, the degree of the remainder expression is one fewer than the degree of the divisor. For point four, we can have two ways to present a statement involving dividend, quotient, divisor, and remainder. For start, let me give you some ways to recognize what a dividend, quotient, divisor, remainder will be. So if I take two to divide seven, then 2 times 3, 6, and the remainder, 1. So, that is the remainder. And the 3 is the quotient. And the 7 is the dividend. And of course, we have the divisor there. So, if I just want dividend, then I can think of it as 7 equals to 2 times 3 plus 1. So, it is the divisor times the quotient plus the remainder. Divisor times the quotient plus the remainder. So if I have dividend divided by divisor, meaning 7 divided by 2, then I will have 3 plus 1 over 2. You can see 3 and a half is also 7 over 2. 
So dividend divided by divisor is basically portion plus the remainder divided by the divisor. For point 0.5, the process of long division is stopped when the degree of the, well, the degree of the remainder is less than the degree of the divisor. So, back to here, point 4, these two statements will come in handy. So, we have to remember consciously, at least for the first one, dividend is divisor times quotient plus remainder. The second one can be uh, derived from the first one. If I just divide dividend by divisor, this lot will also be divided by the divisor. So the divisor cancel off, I get quotient. But for this part, the remainder, when divided by the divisor, I will have this expression. Now, point six, if I'm given this expression of f of x, there will be three ways to find the remainder. So the first method will be long division. Another method will be synthetic method. And the third method will be remainder theorem. The first method will give me also the quotient. and remainder. The second method, just like method one, I'll get the portion and the remainder. As for the last method, though it's the quickest of the three methods, I will only have information of the remainder. So really the choice of the method is based on what we are required of. So in the question where we are asked for the quotient as well as the remainder, I'll go for method 1 or method 2. But if it's just the remainder that I'm interested in, the quickest way will be to use method 3, remainder's theorem. Now, let's elaborate on each of these. So, if I'm focusing on long division, the way to do it will be to take the dividend x cubed minus 7x minus 6. You notice that I have left a gap between the x cubed terms and the x term. That is to accommodate the x squared term. And the divisor is x minus 1. So with long division, the objective is always to move from the left of the dividend expression to the right of it. And each time making sure that the first one in line will be cancelled off. In this case, I have x multiplied to x squared to give me x cubed. 
So x squared times 1, mi uh, minus 1, so I get negative x squared. So the top expression, x cubed minus what I have here, I will get x squared terms minus minus x squared. So I get x squared. Translate that to here. Now, now I will have to get rid of the x squared term, x times x. x times negative 1. So again, the top expression there minus the bottom. So I get 7, negative 7x plus x, negative 6x. So if I want to get rid of negative 6x, I multiply here by negative 6. Negative 6 times x, negative 6x. Negative 6 times negative 1, that is a positive 6. So again, the top minus the bottom expression. So I have this cancel off. Negative 6 minus 6 is negative 12. So the remainder for that long division, I get it that the quotient is x squared plus x minus 2 and the remainder is negative 12 So there are two pieces of information gathered here, the quotient and the remainder. For the next method is the synthetic method. So the way to do it is, the coefficient of the x cubed term is 1. And the coefficient of the x squared term, 0. The x term, negative 7. And the constant term is just 6. Just a reminder, up here, I'll put x cubed, x squared, x, and the constant. So the divisor, x minus 1, is equated to 0, so I get a... 1. So I put down here a 1. This is what I'll do. I'll just transfer the 1 here. So the 1 times the 1 is just 1. So what I do is to add these two numbers up, I get a 1. Then 1 times 1 is 1, I put 1 here, I add these two up, I get negative 6. And the 1 times the negative 6, I get a negative 6. So I have a negative 12 here. So, that is the dividend expression. This portion here, I should get my quotient. This portion here, I should get my remainder. So, this is one, one degree 
less than that so x squared x and the constant d this is the remainder so just looking at the previous one that I obtained I might have written this wrongly but in the working I should have gotten a negative 6 so you can see the result tally x squared plus x minus 6 and the remainder is negative 12 so with this me method synthetic method I will also get the quotient x squared plus x minus 6 and the remainder negative 12 for method 3 we are looking at remainder theorem so what we have set up to do is to take f of x and the expression there and the divisor is just x minus 1 when equated to a 0 I get x equals to 1 so what I need to do is to take this value x equals to 1 put into the fx where I have the x I replace it by 1 so I have 1 minus 7 minus 6 that will be minus 12 so you can see why this method is preferred if I'm only looking for the remainder it is fast and it's easy to deal with so the remainder that I will get is negative 12 so there are three methods open for us to use and it all depends on how familiar we are with each of these methods and also the requirements of the question. So we have come to the end of this particular video segment.